Thanks for being with me today. Today I have an exciting show. At least I think it's really exciting. I don't know about you, but you know, on my faith journey and to validate my faith, one of the things I like to do every week is validate my faith by reciting what I believe in church and hearing scripture and hearing the validation that our God is a real tangible God who really intervenes in our lives in a very direct way and offers us the promise of eternal life. But there is a philosophy out there that denies the existence of God. And I don't know about you, but I don't like it when somebody says that what I believe is wrong and foolish or even calls it a delusion, a false belief that has no personality. And those people who say that, the atheists, the new atheists, believe that all of this incredible world, all of incredible life, all of the universe, everything, just occurred by random chance with no defining purpose, with no intelligence defining and creating this amazing world which is so incredibly balanced. And I don't know if you remember from high school biology, the teacher talking about it in the textbook talking about Darwin's theory of evolution and how life began spontaneously from this primordial soup of information. I talked about that in a recent show, the incredible book, Signature in the Cell, which really talks about how incredibly unlikely it is that life sprang up spontaneously with no intelligent mind to create it. No God, no need for God, everything just happened miraculously, purely by random chance in this incredible world. So many random chance, so unlikely events occurring over and over again to create this amazing world we live in and our amazing lives that we live. Today I'm going to talk about a book by the same author that talks about an entirely different event in geologic history. And I don't know if you believe in geologic history. There may be some people watching this show that really aspire to a purely rigid interpretation of one of the creation stories in the Bible, the one that has a timeline, the seven-day story. But I'm not going to get into an argument about whether the seven-day story has ultimate validity as the timeline for the development of life on earth or is a really strong telling and teaching story to emphasize the importance of taking the Sabbath off, of taking the seventh day off and having that day of holiness and rest and contemplation that God prescribed for man to have to really elevate himself above the dog-eat-dog, day-to-day -to -day toil of life that exists, especially existing among primitive people. So today, I'm going to talk about a book called Darwin's Doubt, which is very aptly named because this subject that we're going to talk about today was something that Darwin couldn't explain. And he was a believer in the geologic record, in the fossil record, in the evidence of old, ancient, extinct animals that can be found in rocks around the world if you look and carefully examine them. You may have seen fossils and not even recognize them as fossils or not thought they're significant. But the early scientists really spent many years cataloging and studying these fossils. There's what's called the Cambrian Explosion, and that's what Darwin's book talks about, Darwin's Doubt. This book talks about all of a sudden more than a dozen distinct species of animals sprang up in this geologic record with no ancestors in the layers below that would indicate these creatures evolved slowly as Darwin's theory states that change occurs over many thousands and millions of years and gradually things go from being little bacteria to being simple animals to being complex animals and then eventually moving on up the chain through unforeseen and unknown links of intermediate species to create the ultimate creature which is man and the higher mammals on earth today. 
Stephen Meyer spends a lot of pages, and this is a meaty, wonderful book that really will bolster your faith that there is a plan in the world, and we have a God that is a creator, because all of these creatures, all of the ancestors to modern animals sprang up nearly instantaneously with no predecessors in the geologic record. That is, they were created, not evolved, not gradually moving up from bacteria to complex regions. I don't know if you can see this animal on the cover, but it's an early animal. Looks like nothing we have here on Earth, but it is an ancestor created animal that has many similarities to modern animals in its shell and in its workings. So this is something that's very important because we live in a culture that is denying God. We live in a culture where many pundits, many entertainers, and many commentators are actively promoting a godless world, a world where God doesn't matter, where God's morality doesn't matter, and where we live a life of purposelessness. I heard an atheist talking on the radio yesterday, and you know, he talked about you try to live well and then you just die. And that was his life plan. Didn't have kids, just living an empty life. And, you know, that's all he thought life was, was just kind of a pointless parade of doing, enjoying life, being with people, doing things, and no, no looking forward to people, no living your life with the Holy Spirit in it, no believing in the Holy Spirit, no believing in the power of the Holy Spirit to make us love our neighbors as ourselves and joyously give time and money. This guy probably doesn't give a dime to anybody, lives a selfish life, a self-centered life, a life encouraging people to be despondent and depraved and realize there is no greater purpose to our lives because it is a purposeless life because there is no creator. So when you have a chance, go to Amazon and buy Darwin's Doubt. Buy the hardcover copy. Take it to your local school library. Take it to your local science teacher. Be an evangelist for the fact that God does exist and God did create our universe and world and us. And I believe that, but it's always really great to have someone provide some outside validation that my belief is not ridiculous, that my belief is not a delusion, as some new atheists call it, that it's just a made-up fantasy and doesn't really have a basis in the geologic record, in the evidence that's on Earth of its incredible complexity and beauty and the fact that we are not a random chance. We are purpose made to do God's work and to be in the conflict between good and evil and help good persevere and succeed in life and to show and develop our character as a home for the Holy Spirit so that we can be in relation with God and share his eternal kingdom, which is really so wonderful and so valuable compared to anything here in the short term of earth. So I, this book is written about a period before the dinosaurs, literally when the complex life first emerged, before the Cambrian explosion, all that was around were some very simple creatures like worms that are found in the geologic record. I don't know if you're familiar with what the geologic record entails, but basically most of it involves mud and sediments that have been deposited and buried creatures and animals and plants in the mud, and the mud has thickened and enough layers come down that it's been compressed, and eventually over many, many years, that mud turns into a shale stone, which is drastically dried and hardened mud that is existent around the world in great numbers because as the earth is eroded, it erodes into small particles which make up shale. 
It's the clay, the very colloidal particles as things degrade due to erosion. Everyone sees this coming off a field that gullies form and the soil and the fine particles run off and get deposited in lakes and seabeds. The ocean is full of deep sediment that's been washed off the land into the sea. And it's amazing when you think about the miraculous world that God created. And being an eternal being, the incredible patience that God had to realize that the earth needed to go through incredible stages of development, birth, renewal, and regrowth, and false starts, and then regeneration of life on earth. All of this created the world we live in today. You know, we live, I drove here in my truck, and I'm using geologic hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons that were created in this incredible plan where the earth was a virtual, verdant, lush rainforest over much of its surface, growing incredible vegetation in a quantity unbelievable in today's time. And I think that the early animals, the dinosaurs that lived during the time when hydrocarbons were formed, actually kind of served a function of treading down and stomping and digesting and crushing this intense vegetation to make it be deposited in layers and form into coal and oil and gas over hundreds of millions of years as we see today. So we are relying on dinosaur fuel. We're relying on things that were created 150, 200 million years ago to provide us with the hydrocarbons that allow modern society to work. God is efficient. God has no timetable that has to get things done like we do because we have a finite life and we want things to happen right now. What would it be like to be timeless, to have a million years be a blink of an eye, inconsequential? There's no need to rush. There's no need to go to extra work to create things when you can design a system that automatically creates incredible beauty and creates incredible resources that in a perfectly placed world, our life is so unrandom and so planned and so fine-tuned at the universal level, at the solar system level, at the earth level, at our biology, Everything is so fine-tuned and perfected, and we're at the climax of optimum times, and it's up to us to share the good news because we have fallen away. The devil has been at work in the world creating doubt, making man think that he knows better than God, making man think that God is not needed, that he doesn't need to have a relationship with God because we are like gods. We are so intelligent. We are so bright. We can come up with explanations for things, even if these explanations are ridiculous. Scientists believe that all these creatures that Stephen Meyer talks about in the book, has pictures of in the book, sprang up without any direction, without any note, even though there's absolutely no evidence of predecessor organism for this gradual evolution to have actually occurred. Everything sprang up, push, in an amazing rush of knowledge. You can see this in the layers. All of a sudden, here's all these creatures. Below it, nothing but very simple organisms that have nothing in common with the complex creatures that are all of a sudden in the geologic record. Scientists can say, well, layers are missing. We just can't find them, blah, blah, blah. But I believe in the geologic record. I think evidence is found, and the evidence is that God created life on Earth, and God created these complex organisms and let them move over the years and fit into the environment so that modern life evolved. I think the guiding hand has been on things. I think God is efficient. You know, why would we think 
that the ultimate being, that the designer of the universe would do things the hard way. Why wouldn't he let things go in the most efficient way by intervening at the microscopic level and causing all these miraculous things to happen using the power of the Holy Spirit, using the power of life. We don't really know what is the difference between dead, inanimate material and life. The spark of life is an infinitesimal, unknown ghost in the machine. And that'll be a subject for another show. We're going to talk today about the incredible need for us as Christians. And if you're not a Christian today, I ask that you pray to God, that you study, that you talk to a Christian that is devout and say, what is this wonderful gift that you have, this peace that passes understanding, that nothing hurts you, nothing brings you down because you know that God loves you and God gives you eternal life through Jesus Christ. This overcomes all adversities and the devil is at work persecuting the good people and the bad alike. You know, being a Christian doesn't mean that bad things aren't going to happen to you. Lots of bad things happen to wonderful Christian people that have a deep faith and really have given themselves over to God and welcomed the Holy Spirit into their life. Guess what? Bad stuff happens to them. They're not immune. Letting the Holy Spirit into your life does not guarantee you perfection in your life and total happiness. What it does give you is a peace that passes understanding that makes every adversity seem trivial because you have the gift of eternal life with God in a world free of all the toils of our current life that we live. We have a lot of joy in our lives here on earth, but we also have a lot of travails. This week I found that a, man, a boy that I went to school with died in his sleep of a heart attack, 56 years old, year, several years younger than me, a sobering event, a good man, raising a family, doing God's work in the world, being a good person, struck down. There is no paradise here on earth and we are not assured a free ride and 120 year life with no troubles. Sometimes life is very short. Sometimes children don't live to be one years old. It is a diversity, but God has a plan and the plan is to build a tribe of faithful to be with him forever through their relationship with God and through the power of the Holy Spirit. What we hear today is something entirely different. Stephen Meyer doesn't invoke the name of God, doesn't invoke the Bible. He just strictly looks at the evidence here on earth, says, what does this mean and what could explain it? That's right, what could explain it? Not saying, I have the scripture, the scripture tells me so. I'm a big believer in the power of the Bible. I love the Bible. It's one of the books I've read the most in the world. It's my number one read. But it is so wonderful to have outside validation that validates the idea that God is the creator of the world and the creator of the universe and came to life to save us and create us in his image. Powerful words, amazing thoughts. So when you can find in the geologic evidence supporting data that validates God the Creator and fights back against the new atheist, I hope you will go online and buy this book. Buy more than one copy. Give this book to skeptics. Give this book to friends and help Stephen Meyer spread the good news. You know, when you buy a book, you are voting with your pocketbook saying, I like what you're doing, Stephen Meyer. I'm, this may be too heavy for me. It may be a book that I can't get through. I can just look at a little bit of it. You don't have to read the whole thing. You can read just a little bit of it. 
read the first part of it, read a little at the middle, read the end, look at the pictures, and I'll tell you, it will reinforce your faith in a powerful way. But you can use this as an evangelical effort to fight the forces of atheism and bring faith into the world. Stephen Meyer has a, got a bunch of YouTube videos. Is involved with the Discovery Institute. You can look him up online, read more about him, but support him by buying a book, by letting Amazon know that this is a book that people want to buy and they need to stock it. They need to have it in their remote warehouses where it's ready to come to you in a heartbeat. That's where the, the war of ideas is, is in permanent information. We need to make this book a better seller. I hope you'll buy at least one, preferably more than one, and spread the word out into the community. Reach out to your pastor. Share this book with your pastor. Talk to your pastor about it. The signature in the cell book is very powerful, but I think this book is maybe more powerful because it really talks more about the incredible creation that occurred at the Cambrian explosion at the geologic period that's named because it has all this life in it. And um, I don't know about you, but I'm a scientifically oriented person. I'm an engineer by education, and I really look for tangible evidence to support my beliefs. And this book really bolstered me. I've believed in intelligent design. I've believed in a creator God fine-tuning and perfecting the universe and the earth all along. But it's wonderful to have validation and a pat on the back saying, yeah, you're on the right track. This makes sense. What people are believing, and atheism is a belief, believing in secular humanism, believing in random chance causing everything to occur is a belief. You can't prove it. You can't go back in time and say, what happened to create DNA? What happened to create all these life forms that exploded in the Cambrian explosion? We can only speculate with what fits the evidence best. And I will tell you, this book makes a compelling case that the answer to what caused the Cambrian explosion is not random chance with un discovered evidence, but the fact that God intervened here on earth and created these incredibly complex organisms that moved through time, modifying slowly to their environment and became a whole bevy of animals that filled the earth with life. You know, it is hard to be a scientist and also say, there is so little I know. I am so in the dark and I'm so thankful that God loves us and wants us to be in relationship with Him and that my life has a purpose that's unknown to me. I don't know what my ultimate best use of my life will be. Is this show and is talking to people about faith and promoting a new holiness and a relationship with God that is so much stronger than what some pastors and some churches promote of a costless relationship with Christianity. All you have to do is say, Jesus save me and you're saved and there is no cost, there is no obligation. I don't believe that. I believe that if you really ask Jesus Christ to save you, if you say, God let the Holy Spirit indwell in me and let me be your servant and I want to love you primarily, and I want to love my neighbor as myself, you are not going to be able to live an independent, selfish life. You're going to be totally devoted, lovingly and caringly and compulsively to loving your neighbor as yourself, doing good works, giving time and money to loving your neighbor, to helping your downtrodden. That means the person that's out on the street. That means the prisoner, that means the convict, that means the destitute. So that is the power of the Holy Spirit at work. But you might say, well, that's all conjecture. I can't see the Holy Spirit, but you can see the evidence of the Holy Spirit, and you can see the evidence of God at work 
in the incredible beauty of our natural world. And this book is a non-biblical validation of the existence of God, and it is a vital argument that needs to be shared widely. So buy a copy of the book, go forward, reach out to us, send us an email, or reach out to us. Of course, we've got the Greater Dallas Coalition's Dallas Champions Academy coming up in early July. It's going to be a powerful, wonderful wake-up experience for 170 young men and women who are in the most dire straits of poverty and destitution, uplifting them and leading them into a life of better relation with God. We'd love to have your support, but I'd really love for you to buy a copy of this book and share it, read it, and let it really reinforce your belief in God and the incredible good news that we find in the Bible that we are saved and we are blessed and none of this stuff that happens on earth has any consequence at all in eternity, which goes on for so many millions and millions and millions of years that our little life here on earth is nothing but a drop in the bucket, a grain of sand on a beach. That's what infinite life means. That's what a God that is timeless, that created the universe billions of years ago, incredibly aligned it so that life on earth could exist. Who knows what else is there? We don't need to know. All we need to know is that God loves us and that we need to believe in Him. And we need to fight the ignorance and fight the devil's work of trying to elevate man and degrade the need for God. So Stephen Meyer, a real man of God, doing God's work in the world to fight back against the new atheism, those that diminish the role of God to the point of being just kind of a wisp that has no real significance. So I don't know about you, but I, I'm not interested in a God that's just kind of an ephemeral afterthought or a delusion in mind that just people make up to tell themselves an explanation for the world. So read the book, buy the book, share the book, and may God's love come into your life and give you the peace that passes understanding that the Holy Spirit offers you. Take care, read the book, and let's talk again. Spread the news, share my show with other people. Take care.